to a trip through the Bulldog Baths. I'm Clark Taylor, and this is Ben Gerber. Hello, Clark. Hi, Ben. Hi. We were just wondering what the Bulldog was like when you first took it over. Oh, back in 1979, we bought the building. It was a 20-year-old bathhouse that just needed to be refurbished a bit. It showed show an age. Needed new decoration, new paint, new lights, and just be brought to date. Yeah. Was it uh, a leather type bathhouse when you bought it? Uh, no, it was a very mixed mash of the gay community. There was evidence that there was leather here at one period of time in its history. In fact, there was uh, this one cage we have in the back room right now was in the basement without being used at that time. Pedestal uh -huh. type cage. Uh, so there was obviously some activity of that nature here before. Uh -huh. Well, shall we walk up oh, those stairs? Sure. Welcome to the Bulldog. Come yeah, right sure. here. Yeah. This entrance is a little bit unique uh, to bathhouses. Well, it was grand in its day. Uh, when the place was started in the 50s, it was one of the first, it was the first bathhouse in the country. Um, some major movies were made here, and uh, they spent a lot of money and did it in a very fine way. Marble on the stairs and marble on uh, the sides uh, indicate that. We added the traffic light feature in the building. We have a couple of them around, and um, it meant several things: stop, caution, and green for go. And uh, everybody was tuned into a good time when they came here when we offered it as a bulldog bath. So come right on into the entrance. When you got into these stairs in the 50s, you were safe from the street people. Uh, we were. How was it when you were here? Well, that didn't change from the time that we took it over in 79. It was just as bad from that standpoint. That's a major reason why we discontinued operation here. Uh, the street people made too much trouble for customers and employees alike. We were just afraid somebody would get hurt. And we felt that uh, we didn't want to be responsible for that. Our list of uh, facilities, what you were able to um, use while you were here, yeah. We're very strict on no booze, drugs, and candles in the building because we thought that people should be safe when they're in here. Mm -hmm. And how was a, would a person be checked in here? What, what, what would here, yeah. yeah. So we have a checker in her. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to Bulldog. Here's your money. Ah. Or the site box. You, you present, your, present your coupon. You bought your membership card for identification and request any of the facilities that we had available. We'll get you a towel real soon. Oh, thank you. This is a two-buck fuck night. Yeah. Uh, and here's the slave auction. Well, we're yeah. in the right place. Yeah. I'm yeah. in the mood to have a few around the house. We also had a sling room available. We had several sling rooms in the building. How did you come to name it the Bulldog? Well, we went through several series of um, name selections. Uh, one we felt that would um, project the name that would project what we wanted to do in the bathhouse was the Bulldog. There's a bar in Atlanta, Georgia called the Bulldog Trucking Company. And it's a very much of a bar. So we felt that we wanted to borrow that name and bring it here to San Francisco and that's how it came to be called Bulldog Country. Uh, as the map indicates here. Once you're in the door, first thing you see is this big massive truck shining in your face. Speeding down this highway that we painted to make it look like a highway with double yellow lines. Uh, the truck also served as a uh, DJ booth for a live DJ. Uh, I've never seen anything like this in the back house. Uh, we bought two trucks in a junkyard for $1,000. And um, I paid them with a the cashier's check. And I told them that I wanted them to do some cutting on it for me, because I needed to haul it away, and they thought that was fine. So I took a marking pencil, and I marked them all up, and we cut them into about five or six pieces. At that point in time, they almost refused to take the cashier's check, thinking something was wrong with me. So, <laughs> so finally they agreed to do it. They cut it up and uh, delivered it on a flatbed truck, similar. The street people saw them bringing all this junk truck stuff in here, wheels, axles, else and they said, well, what are you going to do in there? And I thought we were making a used truck parts store. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we uh, cut it all up and brought it here, and then we had a welder come in and weld it all together again, and we had a body man come in and, and put it all up, and uh, our artist painted it for us, and uh, put it back together and make it look like a real legitimate truck. Yes. You were saying that the artist also painted bugs on the radiator. Right? Yeah, the artist is from New York City, and uh, he did a lot of detail in the building for us. And 
was not uh, was not cheap. It was expensive. Um, his work in here was uh, to the tune of ten thousand dollars. This is just a piece of cardboard that he tried to duplicate a radiator core of a truck, and he also painted on it bugs, butterflies, etc., etc. As you can see from the from the taken picture. Of it. Was this the the club Turkish baths? Uh, is that the? This is the original club Turkish baths neon sign that was out in front of the building when we purchased it in 1979. Been there for years, and so we thought we would could use it and would uh, make a statement to the community that it was the original bath in the country. And um, we um, brought it in here and used it for subdued lighting in this section of the mm -hmm. building. Instead of bright lights, we used it for lighting. The, it's interesting enough about the club, uh, this was where the club bath chain got its name, the it's club. Right. And there's another local competitor by the name of Club Baths in town. Yeah. borrowed that name also. This man did not register the name so anybody could use it at that point in time. So uh, that's how that turned out. Mm -hmm. I see here a uh, uh, really hunky guy sitting on the, that... Uh, this, is, this is part of our pre-advertising uh, opening uh, program. We spent about $20,000 in um, projecting what the Bulldog was going to be right from the standpoint of our professional model out of New York City due to the modeling for us. And this was uh, taken, these photos were taken in a studio in Los Angeles. The truck costs us uh, $500 a day just to use the truck. And it's a huge Mack truck. I remember seeing him on uh, a float advertising the He, he was in one of the Gaty parades about four years ago. Uh, his first name is Sam. And These murals, are the, this is part of the uh, uh, murals that were painted at yes. the beginning? This is just one of the segments of murals that were painted by the artist from New York City. What, Great detail. What's the artist's name? Brooks Jones. You see it right here at the bottom? Oh, uh-huh. Brooks Jones. Brooks Jones, 1979 when he painted on it. We took him down to San Jose to a huge truck stop. He'd never seen a truck stop before, so he wanted to see what one looked like. And so he could... Uh, Re recreate the truck stop scene. And as you see in the kind of the shadows of the background, you see all kind of trucks with their big bodies up, mm -hmm. and grease guns down below, and tire wrenches, and barrels of grease, etc., etc. And uh, he projected this for us. This was the original locker room in here for the club, Turkish bands. They kept it as it was. All truck stops have bathrooms that are very cruisy, and so, in this truck stop, there's a bathroom also, and you, this scene depicts a uh, gentleman using the facility and another one cruising it. And also noticing the scene that you just uh, shot just a moment ago, and as you notice here, look at his mirrored sunglasses. And you'll see in the mirrored sunglasses a reflection of this scene down here, if you get a close-up shot of that. you see that? Yeah. The little figures. Yeah. It's like through the, uh, like he's looking at the sure. mirror that's yeah. behind. Yeah. So we're looking at the, his mirrored sunglasses and that's reflecting the scene over there. Wow. It's a lot of, that's a lot of detail. It sure is. I noticed that he's also shaved his crotch, it looks like. Apparently so. <laughs> and a few other things. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these uh, paintings are, are self-portrait of Mr. Jones. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting, and putting himself in the work. Are any of the other pictures uh, of people that he knew, or? No. Uh, fantasy? Just fantasies. This was the original locker room, and uh, still a very nice locker room. Uh, really unlike is. most lockers and bathhouses nowadays, they even have oh, coat hangers. hangers. Have coat hangers. No you don't have hangers. No wire coat hangers. And, uh, <laughs> Yes, no, no wire coat hangers. Had a little coat hanger rack inside, and they're huge lockers. Very, very good. Yeah. Each had their own private little padlock. We also built 300 duplicate. We duplicated 300 of these, and they're in the basement. Brand new. No out of wood, just like it. So we about 400 lockers. My word. It's a big operation. We had these little uh, blackboards around the building, and this was kind of a bulletin board for advertising whatever interest 
the patrons from all categories, whatever was interest, what they were interested in. You could just simply list your room number and someone would surely come by and visit you. This is the art. Right to the, de to the fine detail of him being uncut. Do you understand? I'll be darned. Yeah. And that's what he looked like. He's also in the other portrait over there, the bearded man in front. That's what I guessed. Mm -hmm. but he's, uh, I thought, well, not. So I've seen that guy twice. Yeah, so far. Mm -hmm. Interesting painting, isn't it? What kind of clientele did you have here, Glenn? Well, when we uh, started out, we were very selective in trying to um, build up the clientele that would be representative of the bulldog and its image that we were trying to project in our advertising and our murals throughout the building and in the general atmosphere. Um, that worked by and large for the most part. Um, we did not discriminate. We allowed people to come in if they qualified. And so from that standpoint, uh, as most things do in different neighborhoods of the city, this was not an easy neighborhood to deal with the street people. Uh, a lot of the gay people who did start coming here wouldn't come back because of being accosted in the street by the street mm -hmm. people and run into trouble with that. And so it did change substantially from the beginning to the end of the operation. The tenderloin number went quite a change, didn't it? Substantial change. From being more like lower polk is yeah. now to being... Yeah, we tried to change it. We put about 25 trees in the street and washed down the sidewalks a couple times a day, even in front of other neighbors' stores and things, just to make it look better and clean it up. Uh, it's it's a battle that never ends. It's always necessary to be down in the street, patrolling the street, and monitoring what the activity of the people are. It's difficult. Um. But I remember the old baths near the end it was very interracial. Uh, was, was that true here too? Or? Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty typical of what our operation was too. Uh, you're in a neighborhood where these people are living and dwell and where they spend time. And so consequently there was that activity. We would not let, let it become a flop house. So we would not let people come and stay hours at a time. We restricted their visit to eight hours so that they would not be staying and using it for a long time. Uh, the previous owner used a lot of them to stay 24 hours or longer at a time, and so that's when we got a flop house. Mm -hmm. Thus it became dangerous, it became uh, very drug orientated, and it was difficult for him to manage his business so he was closed down. So with certain simple rules, you can control that if you uh, are inclined to do so. I see up above there's the... Uh, and we had, uh, we had our own postcards. We made postcards and had them available for customers who came here to see the Bulldog bands. Uh, we had a complete lineup of facilities in the, uh, in the counter for people to purchase from Crisco and uh, rings right down to about anything anybody would, might want here. Even things that would uh, accommodate uh, sunbathing. We have sun deck and they can mm. get to... Uh, things like lotion and things of that nature here too. We had maps for people too who wanted to get around town. Visitors had not been here before. And the place for the dirty, dirty town is this where you also check out? Check out. Uh, you check in on the outside as you came through. You check out here, this section here. You bought your extra supplies there. Combs, razors, shampoo. Tums for the tummy even. <laughs> Well, shall we take a look at what some of the rooms are like? All right, come down this way. Uh, oh, look at here. That is painted like uh, <laughs> all of the uh, all of the plastered beams and, uh, in the building. We painted to make it look like you were uh, visiting under a bridge, like you would visit under the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh -huh. Those are very cruisy spots in some sections of the country. So we painted the plastic. There are the plastered beams that look like they were steel beams, rivets, even put rust on them, and in some cases oh, sprayed, sprayed the substance to make it look like dirt, because under the under bridges is very dirty. And even little things like this that you see oftentimes under bridges. You know, as we're going along, I'm thinking this must have taken a tremendous amount of time and thought and, and uh, money to put it together. It, there's a lot of detail in this. Each room has its own little stainless steel table. We painted uh, little paintings on the walls in most of the rooms, and each room is named after a state license plate. 
And these are authentic from a state license plate directly around the country that's provided by the federal government. And so each room has a number and, and a corresponding state and a color code to go with it too. Mm. You notice a little painting on the wall over here? Each room has some kind of a little painting on the wall. Maybe that's the way people are in Iowa, I don't know. <laughs> Here's a room from uh, Vermont. And check what's on the wall in this room. It's a painting of a, ah, a hole in the wall. <laughs> and look what's hanging a glory through hole. <laughs> How fun. That's really... Vermont. We all should go to Vermont. Yes. I love these license plates. I thought they were real license plates when I... They're, they're little um, pieces of board that are painted original colors. Come and check what Nevada has to offer in, the, in their room. Look on the wall there. Another painting. That would take a long time just to paint each one. And to take a long time. But how, what was the uh, length of time? A month, two months? We three started months? Uh, construction in about May of 1979, and we were finished for opening late October. Mm. It took that long period of time. Did you have an opening party? Certainly did. Uh, what was that one? A big opening party. Yes, you did. It was a CMC weekend. Yes. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people here. So Lined up to get in the street down the block about two blocks. If I remember correctly, mm -hmm. would you say? What? Some 800? I suspect so. Yeah. This is one of the best facilities in the building. We have uh, put together uh, by a plumber, and as you notice, it has all the regulation controls on it so that water pressure is controlled and water temperature is controlled. So mm. that's a very safe thing to use. Mm -hmm. And some reasonable instructions here. We had available about a 30-inch hose that we uh, sold to the, to the patrons. Uh-huh, and, and they would stick it on They would attach it to the little... Uh, nipple right above the little stainless steel sink there and use that. Oh. So they could mix the water. They could mix the water, blend it, and the pressure and temperature was controlled from the valves above. Oh. Automatic. And that, when was that? The, the, this is in 79? 79 we did that. That is really something. So each one had their own hose. Yeah, their own hose. And, uh, it was a clear plastic hose, and we bought it from a hardware store, and they couldn't imagine what we were doing with so much hose. <laughs> this is one of the two shower areas. We have about 10 showers in the building, and they're still in excellent condition, you can see. We have a thousand gallons hot water heater in the building, and we were never out of hot water. This is one of the two steam rooms and dry sun. This portion is the dry sun, and the portion back in here is uh, the steam room. Interestingly enough, the design of the steam room was, was so um, so new in its time, but it still is the type that people use. The ceiling is not a flat ceiling, so that when you sit in the steam room, hot water doesn't drip into your hair mm. or on your head. Mm. It runs down the walls behind you. A flat ceiling in the steam room, water drips on you all the time. So that was an interesting way back when this was designed. I'll say. I remember this steam room back in the 50s. It uh, was a tremendously popular place to, to uh, play sex. We kept one steam room hot with a lot of steam and one not so warm in case that's uh -huh. what they wanted to do to accommodate yeah. the patrons. Uh, this noise also had music in it. Back here, there's also a, a real nice um, shaving area, working area. Clean up, brush your teeth, uh, push that section to the building, and then have uh, cold water, ice water in here too. Did you add this, or was this already here? Oh, this here. This this here. here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember. And interestingly enough, most saunas have uh, electric units to provide heat. This one runs off of a furnace, and these uh, grills just have hot water going through them that provide a very warm, moist, room. Mm -hmm. Not steam, but just hot. Not steam with a bench in This is really nice. The seat, too, mm -hmm. instead of being so slippery, you've got texture. The tower is very interesting in the building. There's a lot of money, money being spent on the tower. This shower area has these little doors that open. Put up air in I see the birds have made nests up in here. 
Feel that pressure on the side. Go right in. Turn it I remember we used to be fun to stand out here in the drying area and, and watch the people showering and vice versa. Right. And take your time. Yeah. <laughs> Wear the towel while drying it off. Lots of romance. I'm just with the back stairs here, and this was not used by the previous That's operation. Right. But we put it together to use it to tie in the cell block area down below. Mm. So the, the flow of customers would be uh, better and it would be easier to cruise. Yeah. So if you started following someone in the building, you could just plan to walk on quite a distance. This is a long corridor here. And notice the beams up above as we go through here. Because oh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, and the license plates on the doors. Uh, this was a little type of bunk area here. There was a lot of activity here. Oh, yeah. It had certain advantages oh, yes. for walking by, too. Mainly. Already puckered. Yes, so ready to like a little rose blossom. I think it's a receiving signal, don't you think? I do. It says red, but it means green. <laughs> Turn the green lights on. <laughs> this is a popular room. Yeah. Uh, we even had a fan above it. Sometimes there were sections would go on so long they get too warm, especially. In wow! Summer. Yeah, there's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> and we allowed him to use a but, fan. And a good sized bed. With a mirror above it. But uh, did, did all of this come about at the same time or would somebody say, hey, let's put a mirror up there and hey, that's a great idea, we'll add that? Or Those little additions like that mirror and the fan were uh, evolved over the period of time, customer requests. Ah. We try to accommodate. I see there's also shutters so that people could... So this could them. be a private room if you wanted it to be or if you wanted an audience. Uh, open the shutters and it wasn't necessary that people would not come in because they had these little bars put here. No source shutters here. We built this ourselves and uh, we took off uh, some ideas from some other places in town. This has a huge hole where you could just sit down in it if you wanted to. So you didn't crawl through. And, I was. <laughs> and others had uh, long, long holes. Uh, this little round hole had a long hole oh. that would accommodate different heights of people. Oh. And you had these handles up here where you could hold on. This is what's left of the 1950 bathhouse up here. This is just gilded ceiling. Oh, yes. I remember that. It didn't quite fit, but it looked all right for us. Mm -hmm. the opening party was fantastic. It was a connection with uh, one of the parades, and we had about 800 people. Was well, that the, the, the parade where Big Mac Yes. Uh, I was on the truck yes. and passing out the, the silver... The balloons. Uh-huh, yeah. the balloons. Uh, we also had a lot of uh, slave parties and celebrities had come to those slave parties. The best ones were when Al Parker came as, as an MC and uh, people just really loved seeing him. He's a very famous person and his movies sell very rapidly. What's a slave party? Well, um, as a promotion, we would give out slave money. Uh, I might have some here at hand. So it, and it, simply what would happen is that when you come in, we would offer you some slave money in connection with uh, your visit. And here's a denomination of $500. And you could use that then to uh, purchase a slave on a later date. So that the slave options, auctions would come up once a month and slaves then could be purchased with this play money. It wasn't anything that was illegal, it was just a, a promotion or in-house thing. And we also had master parties where slaves could purchase masters. Oh, it would be reverse rules. Oh, how very with, with the same play money. So we even made it look like it was authentic to the backside here. You have, you have the eagle and you have the address and our truck. Do you see that? Yeah. The largest bath in the USA. Square footage, it was the largest bath in the USA. Frankly. One of the interesting things in this section of the building right here is this big mural on the wall here. <coughs> and that has a lot of detail. <coughs> if you look real close, you see even in the dark shadows, more bodies functioning up here. You see that, yes. These are bodies in action up here, and then the ones that are in light are down through here. But notice the detail. Here's uh, a green jock strap, 
leather strap around the neck. Uh, the details on, on the bodies, the muscles, indicate a lot of talent. Hard hat and even tattoos. Um, you have um, boots and trousers and down here are poppers and rings and Crisco and here are the real poppers. And uh, it depicts a, a orgy room scene. Here's the door to the orgy room and the exit to go outside. You notice that? Here's a, a whole groupie operation here. Elaborate and very, very elaborate and very dramatic. Uh, even cock rings, black leather. Uh huh. And glove. Glove. Here's a chain. Because he's got a Peterbilt uh, t shirt on. Absolutely. Another leather hat here. <coughs> here's a leather strap. <coughs> More jock straps. And there's a popper container. Yeah. Here's a jacket, a military jacket. Here's lube. Someone is chained fast to the bed here. You see the padlock and the chain through there. A pair of underwear. Here's a 69 position. What is it? What is this? This is a bed. A bed? A steel oh. bed. Uh -huh. So you can still see it. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a nice painting here. See this t-shirt that has a pack of marble know. cigarettes in it? You see how interesting that is? I see the bulldog is getting some too. <laughs> yeah, this is our little mascot. He's a little bulldog. And he has an erection. He's fucking an armpit. That's what Somebody's he's looked at dogs. <laughs> they look like. Beast you out. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. uh, the artist also did some interesting things with little little sets, little stones. You see that little stone right there? Oh. Just to make him glisten in the dark and shine. Oh. Uh, several have been removed, but uh, a lot of them are still available around mm. here. See, I don't think I don't know what that had one on. And I, I see that he gets some racial. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they have differences in here too. This is a military boy. You uh -huh. notice this here, the military the belt here. Yeah, oh, and, the belt. yeah. and the Crisco's cans on its side. Oh, That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Completely used. <laughs> and here's another nice scene in the bed. Those paintings were put on drywall, so we can remove them very easily. As you notice, they're uh, at the top. They're put on with a piece of wood to yeah. hold them on the wall. Yeah. So they come right off like a big painting. All the bathrooms, we put all this graffiti and all these little stains and stories and stuff. Then you all put some in. It looks like some of the customers added a little too. In some cases, customers add a few. There's a great big uh, pencil graffiti in one of the bathrooms. Downstairs uh, by the chicken office, he did it also. He did that. I wonder. It's that's magnificent. Mm -hmm. This is a truck stop uh, restaurant for the Bulldog. I see it's got some very appropriate uh, Bulldog Country uh, photographs. Photograph. Uh, walls. What do you think? What do you think is in black and blue and silver color to accommodate that theme? Yeah. Set cases of beer bottles around and things of that nature. Yeah. Explosives, keep out, restricted, reserved parking, private road, no parking. <laughs> <laughs> and as you notice, in the outside there of our truck stop, we put in this great big storefront, glass thing, storefront area. This is eleven hundred dollars just for that glass work there. Uh, we put another truck outside of there. And uh, it, the lights were burning all the time and made it appear like as you sit in a restaurant here and look out through these glass windows in the front door of the restaurant that there was a big semi parked out there. And on each side of that truck are painted on the walls uh, pictures of trucks that are sitting in the back parking lot and that the drivers are here in the restaurant having a food day. Hard pass area going through there. And trespassers will be eaten. Yeah. Interesting. Bulldog. <laughs> notice that on the painting behind the truck here, these trucks that are parked here, and notice the the action between the trucks in the parking lot. Oh. You see the silhouettes of bodies, and the shadows there, the people doing things. Truck drivers. There may be some females involved there. They're women truck drivers, you know. 
Did customers also have sex in the yes. truck? Yes, they loved this at the steering wheel and have sex. It just looked like a truck inside. Yeah. And they loved to sit in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could really get off on having a scene in here. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, there's that movie, Auto Erotic. We can have truck erotic. <laughs> This is a lot roomier in the back seat of a car. Oh, indeed, indeed. Okay. Right. Coming down this way, we had deluxe rooms, that's big size room, double bed, available for people. Uh, oh, that's a meat chair. There. Yeah, this had a sling in it, and the slings in one of these room chairs is loose right now. Another little drawing in chalk on the wall back there that someone's put up for us. Isn't that interesting? Oh, a local artist here did that. This has to be the most elaborate and realistic cell block that I've ever seen in my life. How did you come to put this here? Well, this, this room wasn't even used in previous band operations. Some kind of a little apartment or something back here that he used for himself. But we ripped everything out, started over, and we decided we wanted a double story cell block here. And we wanted to incorporate all the features of a natural jail cell scene. Right to the point of having an open area bed where people would be sleeping in the center of the room. Uh, we had, uh, we put in cell blocks into private cells and cell bars that could be locked up with handcuffs and you could lock your slave in the room and go away and come back later. Uh, we put steel beds in each of the rooms instead of bunks, as you notice. They all have steel beds in the play. Authentic cells. Some of them even have toilets. Uh, we, we put toilets in some of the cells to make them look like a real uh, jail cell. And in fact, if you notice, the seat's been removed because in real jails you don't have seats on them because they tear them up and use them to kill each other. <laughs> mm. uh, upstairs we have urinals. And, uh, some of the cells. The, um, you notice the, uh, we used steel beams and then we painted them uh, a gray color and then we smeared all kinds of stuff on them to make them look old and even dirty in some cases. You notice the stuff on the, on the pipes, mm -hmm. so the brand new pipes when we started. The beams the same way up above, we did the same thing. Uh, even going so far as to paint cracks on the walls. You notice cracks on this wall to the left side going to the stairs going mm -hmm. And the beams oh. up above. Um, we added a huge stainless steel urinal where people could stand there, three or four, four people could stand there and stainless steel urinal. There's a drawing right above it if you notice. Oh, coming out of the cracks into a cock. We also added uh, a bathtub mm -hmm. for whatever purpose it was. Mm -hmm. uh, this room had two large screen videos. We played two portal videos at the same time, different, different uh, themes, different types, both going at the same time. And the advantage of it all, you can stand up here on the, on the second level on this little catwalk here, look at people in the rooms behind you doing things. You can look down below, people in on these beds uh, doing things and watching the movies and see everything going on in the, same, in the room at the same time. About how many people uh, uh, would you say at a maximum, would you see them in here? We've, uh, well, parties, you couldn't get in the room. It was, it was too full. In fact, we were fearful the place would fall down because that's a steel beam. But you know, even though we had a welder come in here and weld it up, it was a little German welder called from Fulton Street. And I'm sure he knows the age people. But we had him come in here and weld up his cell block. He could not believe what he was doing. He was probably 60 years old. He couldn't believe he was making a jail cell. <laughs> it would be interesting to watch him. But uh, normally, this was the main activity room. There were a lot of people in there all the time. This is where everybody came. This would be the main origin room? This is the main origin room. Absolutely. Well, did any people talk about the, uh, the motif, what they liked about it, what they... Well, they liked this, the, the jail, the authentic jail cell look that this projected. And most people thought it was very, very authentic. 
we painted drawings on the walls in there. As you notice, there's two semis speeding down the road, and there's an easy rider on his motorcycle jerking off between the two trucks speeding down between them. Yeah, yeah. It's our, it seems to be carrying out another real hyper masculine yeah. theme. The theme of trucks, uh, leather, uh, slave, and uh, master scenes. Um, Weekend lockup. <laughs> And then this thing. We have a mirror, and some of them, this mirror has come spots paint, uh, paint all that stuff basically all the time. And they look at that. Yeah. Painting of those earlier. <laughs> There's an interesting painting in this little bathroom on this side here, too, that you need to see. There's a window there that makes it look like you're looking out the window into another building nearby. And you see this gentleman over there. Very nice looking body. And that's on a piece of drywall that can be, that can be framed. Wow. And, and look at what a good job it is. Uh huh. Cock ring and everything. Uh, and this is where a lot of us make just handcuffed and kept our laundry's done. Notice the little cane door. I had to crawl through the beginning. Mm -hmm. Those hooks for the wall, we use those for the stay lock. Uh, wow. We handcuff people in that and they stood there and she waxed on the floor. Is that before sale or after? <laughs> During the sale, they were trying to uh, they were trying to uh, make the slave look better. Good. So, so they, like it's they wanted to show how much torture the slave could enjoy, enjoy or accept or tolerate. You know, when as we're talking, one thing I, I get a feeling. This is a world in itself. This is a world, a fantasy world, but a subculture. This is a place that has a lot of feeling. And it's not just the money. I mean, there's a lot of money put in here. But there's a lot of love and care and a lot of thought. And I'm wondering, I mean, obviously some of the things could be put somewhere else, other, but, but what, do you, what is it like? What are you feeling? It feels like a, a person or a child or, has has kind of died here or something. What do you well, it was a it was a dream put together by several of us. Uh, a another concept in the bathhouse. We have other bathhouses in town, and a lot of them are very fine looking, and very very new different. and very different. And the other side of the bathhouse operations are those places that were not well maintained, but yet this, the, were the only places that were available for the gay people to go to. We thought that we could offer something close to that type of operation, give them a choice, and still have it uh, look like a nice, clean operation, and offer something that was a fantasy house for them. And it did work that way. People did not come in. Customers and uh, When you're talking about a party with 800 people and nights when, when it was hard to even get in the room, yeah. uh, when, what was the lifespan of uh, the bath? Open in this opened in '79 and we closed it in 1982, the summer, uh, December of 1982. We opened in uh, the primary reason that, that we did close the bathhouse up, we do own the real estate too, is we had some uh, disgruntled investors. There were five who owned it, and we had three investors. And we were, uh, we were so um, upset with the whole problem of dealing with that that. And then the, the streets in, dealing with the people out on the street, we felt that we just were no longer interested and uh, decided to close it up and just to sell the real estate. Uh -huh. So that's what happened. Mm -hmm. well, you've had, uh, like you said, you own various yeah. uh, bathhouses. How does it feel when one of them opens, one of them closes? Well, uh, to, a, to a lot of extent, when you, when you build one, your own concept from start one to completion and open thing that becomes pretty much part of it. And, kind of it. Yeah. and quite possibly, I mean, that's why we've had it for a couple of years, just hanging on to it to see what would come up. You know, it may be a good time to come back up again with the bathhouse comes in. And the people not having a choice of bathhouses to visit. And a nice place to go to. It may be another time to open the numbers. Is there anything else you'd like to say? That you haven't said about anything connected. What it's like to be yeah, in this part of the gay world, part of the world. Yeah. Well, there, there are 
there are some responsibilities in connection with one such an operation. And sometimes those responsibilities come down on you pretty hard. It's not been a good time in 1984 to be in a bathhouse business because of the AIDS crisis and because of the division in the gay community in reference to who's responsible for AIDS and where it's coming from. Uh, I take that pretty hard because there's so much unknown about AIDS. And uh, because of that and the crisis that's built the last two years, I'm glad that the place is closed. Because there's, there's, uh, so many unknowns about AIDS that uh, I don't know what contribution a place like this could have to it. And until I find out, I wouldn't want to rest. I, I, don't, I wouldn't rest easy until I know for sure what is the situation. And when we have the facilities that uh, the Department of Health condemns as unsafe, uh, I think you should take a second look about you. I think it's time for caution. That's the way I feel about it. It's not easy. And it's not nice. I would say 1984 is the worst time of my life reference to my, <coughs> my involvement in the gay community. I was 40 years of age before I got involved in the gay community. I was married, I had three children. I have a grandson. And I got involved in this. <coughs> It's been interesting, it's been fun, it's been exciting. This year has not been. Bernie Alice. That's right.